Hello guys, and welcome to the Getting Good with JavaScript screencast series. This series of screencasts is made to go along with the book Getting Good with JavaScript. I'm Andrew Burgess, the author of the book, and I'll be taking you through this series of five screencasts. Each screencast will go with one of the chapters of the book. This screencast that you're listening to right now will go with chapter one, and there'll be a screencast to go with each of the other chapters as well. What we'll do in these screencasts is basically just walk you through the material that is taught in that chapter of the book so that if you're having any problems in understanding any of the concepts as they're uh, given to you in the book, hopefully I'll be able to make them a little more clear as I talk about them and show you how they work um, in these screencasts. So you may have said to yourself, well, why is there yet another JavaScript book being written? Aren't there enough? JavaScript books? Isn't there enough JavaScript material out there on the web already? Why do we need another one? Well, what I hope to do with this book is fill a niche that no other book that I have seen, um, and I haven't seen them all, of course, I haven't read them all, but one thing I like when I'm learning a new language or learning a new concept or really learning anything is a resource that will take me from knowing pretty much nothing to knowing as much as I possibly could know, at least broadly, um, not necessarily knowing those concepts in depth, but knowing enough to get me using them and get me playing with them um, in as little time as possible. And that's what this book does. In 100, 120 pages or so, I've tried to teach you as much as I possibly can about JavaScript. We don't go in depth in a lot of topics, but after you finish going through this book and these screencasts, you can have gone from knowing absolutely nothing about JavaScript to knowing enough to use it or start using it in your daily work on the web. And the nice thing about that is really the only way you're going to learn JavaScript is by using it. You're not going to learn it by reading. You're not going to learn it by watching these screencasts. You've got to use it. And that's the point of the book, to get you to a place where you can use it at least semi-confidently so that you can use it, you can read it, understand it, play with it, and um, make mistakes, of course, and learn as you go. So that's what this book is going to cover. We're going to start at the very basics. You're going to learn how to write JavaScript in, like, we're going to learn all the core syntax. You're going to learn what to actually type. You're going to learn a lot of best practices and important concepts for writing JavaScript. And that's one of the other concepts I like in a resource when I'm trying to learn something is that they only teach you um, the best practices. They don't teach you everything. They only teach you the good things. So there's a lot of stuff in JavaScript that I'm not going to teach you, mainly because it's not considered a good practice. It's there. It has a legitimate use sometimes. But I'm not going to teach it to you because 99.9% .9 of the time, it's considered a bad practice to use that feature or that method of doing something. So we're go only going to learn the good things in JavaScript. So we'll learn about the core syntax, as I said. Then we're going to go on to learn some best practices, important concepts, things like that. And then um, in the last chapter, chapter 5, we're going to discuss... Um, writing JavaScript that actually uh, interacts with web pages. Because although even today JavaScript is being used on the desktop, in the uh, on the server, in mobile application development, and that kind of thing, when you're starting, you're most likely going to be working with JavaScript on the web, in web pages. So that's what we're going to learn in Chapter 5. A quick note here, pretty much everything I'm going to talk about in these screencasts is also related to is also talked about in the book. And so right now you can see along the bottom of my screen here, I've got this little banner. That banner will give you a heading and a page number and to, so that you can find the portion in the book that's relating to what I'm talking about at a given time. So that way, if you want to follow along in the book while you're watching, or if you want to go back to the book afterwards to read more about a given topic, you can do that really easily. So let's start by talking about where JavaScript came from. Well, it was originally written by a guy named Brandon Ike. He wrote the JavaScript language in two weeks, which is an incredibly short time for writing a programming language. He took a bunch of features from different languages, and he put those all together using some features, added some other stuff of his own, and voila, came out with JavaScript. Actually, it wasn't called JavaScript originally. He called it Mocha, and the name was changed to LiveScript and finally JavaScript. This all happened way back in 1995, or at least that was when the first browser to support JavaScript came out. That was Netscape Navigator 2. Now, for a long time, JavaScript wasn't considered to be a very good language. It was neat for using image rollovers and that kind of thing, but the big idea on the web at that time was Java applets. 
Well, if you've been on the internet for a while, you'll know that there aren't very many Java applets around, so JavaScript really won out, and it's really become the darling of the web community. So let's actually learn JavaScript. Well, how are we going to use JavaScript to start with? Like I said, it's hard to find a place where JavaScript won't run these days, but the overwhelming majority of JavaScript, and what you'll be writing right now, certainly falls into this category, is run in a web page. This book has over 100 code samples that you have gotten when you downloaded the book and the screencast. There should be a zip file there of all the demo files and pretty much every code example in this book you can open up and run. And so all that code is in there. And if you open up one of those sample files, you'll see that the way we put JavaScript in a HTML file, let me open up a text editor here and I'll show you. So here's just text edit on the Mac. It's like Notepad on Windows. You're familiar with writing HTML. You write you know, like this, you know, you've got your HTML tag, you've got your head tag, all this kind of thing. You've got tags. And I should mention that for this book, I expect you to know and understand and be pretty familiar with HTML and CSS. That's really the only requirement. You understand HTML and CSS. For me, if, if you know that, then you should be good. So just like you might expect, JavaScript is a tag as well. So we can have a script tag like this, and then we can write JavaScript code in here. So I can say alert, welcome to JavaScript, and don't worry at all about what this does. It's JavaScript, and we'll learn all about it. And by the end of these screencasts, you will find this to be the easiest sample of code you ever saw. So, but the point here is that we write script tags, just like any other tag, an opening tag and a closing tag, and you put the JavaScript inside it. There's another way to do that, and that is to link to JavaScript. You're familiar with CSS, and so you'll know that, well, you can use CSS inline as a, a style attribute on the element, or you can put CSS in a script and a style tag at the top of the page, similar to what we're doing with JavaScript here. The best thing to do with CSS is to use the link element and to put the CSS in its own file. It's the same with JavaScript. It's best to put it in its own file and link to it. And the way we do that, we still use the script tag, but we add a source. And we'll just have um, our code .js. And then, unfortunately, we can't do a single tag like that as we would with an image tag or something like that. We are required to have the closing script tag like this um, for that to work in all browsers. But just the, the way this works is we have a script tag, and one of the attributes is the src attribute, which is the source attribute. I'll just mention right now that if you ever find your JavaScript doesn't seem to be, or your, your web page doesn't seem to be recognizing your JavaScript, check this. You will not believe how many times I spelt it SCR instead of SRC when I was learning JavaScript. But you'll get used to SRC as an abbreviation for source. And so you'll just you'll put your JavaScript in a separate file just like you do your CSS. Note that it has the .js extension, that's the file extension for JavaScript. And you just link to it in your source file, whatever it is, of course, there's path to our code. And just like CSS, it'll pull it in and execute it. There's two important notes I want to make about including a script tag like this. First of all, notice where I've put these script tags. I put them at the bottom of the body. So we would have all our content up here, right? And everything up there. And then I've put the script tags right at the bottom. There, what you should do it's, it's a smart idea to put all your script tags at the bottom of the page, because this way, if they're interacting with any HTML, the HTML will have loaded first. The reason That's the reason we do this. We put them at the bottom, because if we put them above the HTML that they were going to work with, the web browser will download and run the code in these scripts when it meets these scripts. And so you want to put them after the HTML. Now, you can put them wherever you want uh, if, first of all, it doesn't matter about the HTML. If the JavaScript you're working with doesn't have to manipulate or work with any HTML, then you can put them above the HTML and it doesn't matter. Or if you write the code in such a way as to wait for the code to complete loading, I'm sorry, wait for the page to complete loading before the browser will run the code. And we'll see how to do this uh, later on when we talk about 
events in chapter 5. The other thing to note here is that if you see JavaScript on the web, you may see something like this, type equals text slash JavaScript. And you'll see that in there, it could be either with inline or to a linked script like that. This used to be required. It's no longer required. You can leave that out. A browser will just assume it's JavaScript by default. This has no longer been required as of HTML5. So if you're using an HTML5 doc type, uh, like this, if I can get that spelled right, doc type HTML, the HTML5 doc type, then you certainly don't need to include the type equals text slash JavaScript uh, attribute on your script tags. All right, so this is how you get JavaScript onto a page and you'll see all of the examples uh, code. If you, if you want to see more examples of this, you can go open up all the example code in a uh, text editor. The other thing we should talk about is running JavaScript. So I'm going to uh, leave this here. Let me just put a title in here. Um, we'll just put some content here. And I'm going to save this to my desktop. And we're going to call it, um, I'm just going to call it first.html. Yes, we want to use HTML. So there we have it there. Now, what we can do is, uh, well, let's open it in a browser. I'm going to open, well, if I just double click on this, it's open in Chrome. You can see this here, we have a JavaScript alert. And if the code that I wrote in JavaScript is just popping up this box when the page begins, and I can just hit OK, and that's all it does. So after you start writing JavaScript more, you'll want to be able to um, work with that code well on a live page or while it's running. For example, we have this page here. What if we wanted to work with the JavaScript on this page? We can use a Firefox extension called Firebug. So let's go install the latest version of Firefox, and then we're going to install the Firebug uh, plugin. I'm going to download this right here. There we go. Let's save that. While that's downloading, I'm going to go to getfirebug.com. Firebug is the best uh, plugin for web developers to use. It's great for not only HTML and CSS, but it also has a lot of great JavaScript tools for debugging and doing other things that we won't even be getting into in this course, in this screencast series. But also, it has some great uh, features that you can use right out of the box if you're just learning JavaScript. So we're actually going to want to come to this page in Firefox once we get Firefox open. Firefox has just about finished downloading here. So let me show you one more thing while that downloads. If you prefer to stick within Google Chrome, as I've got here, or if you want to work with uh, Safari, and these work on both uh, the Windows and Mac platforms, I can right click here and say inspect element, or I can go up to the wrench menu here, tools, and say de developer tools. And I get this console, or this set of tools, popping up here at the bottom. You can see our HTML right here. Now, we really don't have time, uh, and this isn't the place to go through everything that you can do with these developer tools, both here or in Firebug. What we're just going to basically talk about is working with the console, which we have right here on this tab. This is the console. And... Uh, You'll see how we can log things to the console. For example, if I reopen, let me open this with, whoops, open this with text edit. Oh, that's not how I want it. I'm going to have to open it with my preferred editor, Vim. And we should talk about editors. There are a lot of good editors out there for writing JavaScript. If you're already writing HTML and CSS, um, you probably have an editor that you like. If you're on the Mac, that may be TextMate or Coda or Espresso, Espresso, something like that. If you're on the Windows platform, it might be Dreamweaver or Notepad++ or Komodo Edit or Sublime or something like that. Or the e-text editor, which is very similar to uh, TextMate. I prefer Vim, no matter what platform I'm on. Um, and if you want to learn all about Vim, there's a screencast series by Jeffrey Way on the uh, Tuts Plus Marketplace that you can go pick up. Um, what I was going to show you here is if I switch that where the word said alert to console.log, 
I know this is something you're not going to be understanding yet, but I just want to show you this because um, you're going to see this in examples and you're going to be using it in the examples that you execute. And as we get further on, you'll understand how this works. But whereas previously you saw when I put alert there, this text here was shown in a text box that popped up when I loaded the page. Now if I refresh the page, instead of a text box showing up, in the console here I've got the web developer tools, or the, uh, the, de yeah, the developer tools open here in Chrome. I'm on the console tab. If I make this wider you'll be able to see that console tab there. And notice we get this message here, welcome to JavaScript. Instead of showing us a little text box, an alert box, it put it that text down here in the console and we'll be able to use that in different ways as you'll see throughout the examples. Um, you'll understand of course what this code does as we go on. Don't worry about that right now. Just realize that um, when you see in the examples console.log or the word alert that is there to display the um, what the actual principle that we're learning. Um, in the example code that you can execute. And of course, all the example code is identical to the code in the book. So you could copy the book, copy the code out of the book, paste it into your own template, and uh, execute it that way if you want to get a little more practice. Or you can look at the examples that I've provided and execute the code that way. All right, so it looks like we have Firebox, uh, Firefox installed, or I'm sorry, downloaded here. Let's open this up and install it. I'm going to install that to my applications directory. And let's copy this URL. Uh, and let's copy this URL too. And we can close these. And now let's eject that. We can delete that DMG file. Um, I'll keep this open here. And now let's launch Firefox. Yes, we want to open it. Oops. Uh, cancel. No, don't make this the default browser. Okay. Alright, let's get a blank page open here. Um, so here's Firefox. You're familiar with it. If you're familiar with if you've been doing any web development at all. So now I'm going to just paste get firebug in there. I'm just using Alfred, the text launcher, I'm sorry, the application launcher as a multi as a as a clipboard for clipboard history. So that's what that was there. All right, so now we're in getfirebug.com slash downloads. Firebug firebug one point seven for one point for Firefox four. Let's get the one point seven two. Yes, we want to allow this. All right. And let's install it. We have to restart Firefox. Here it is. There we go. We have Firebug installed. Awesome. So now let's paste in this URL here. Go there. Here's our alert box as we got with uh, in Chrome. We're getting it. It looks a bit different in Firefox, but nevertheless, it's the same thing. So in Firebug here, I'm sorry, this is Firefox. And let's see how we have Firebug. Notice right down here, we have the status bar. And in this corner here, we have, if I can, uh, let me see, can I zoom in a bit? Yes, there we go. I have a little bug icon there. That is the Firebug icon. If I click that, we get the Firefall, uh, Firebug panel that's popped up here. And you can see similar to the Chrome uh, inspector or the Chrome developer tools, we have a console tab and HTML, CSS tab. Currently it's disabled. Let's enable that. I'm going to clear it here. And now let's go back to the code that we have here. And if we change this back to console.log, remember what that did in uh, Chrome is print this message here to the console. As we saw, now we have the console here in Firebug. If I refresh the page, you can see we get the message there. So if a lot of the example files, they'll either use the alert method and show you the text box with the output from the code that you're learning at the time, or they're going to use the console. And I go back and forth so you get a feel for both of them here. And so you'll want to remember that if you don't see anything, 
check I'll have a little explanation underneath each of the code examples and when you open the HTML files that hold the examples it'll say at the bottom what it should do so it'll show you the code and then it'll say um, this code should show an alert box with this value in it or it should put this item log this value here to the console if you don't see it you want to go down here and open up the console uh, sometimes if the console is closed it's been disabled so you'll want to if you open it up you don't see anything have it open and then hit refresh and you'll see it then uh, if you have this I can uh, close that status bar there I can probably go to view um, oh let's see now I'm stuck because I'm not I'm not sure what I'm doing with uh, Firefox oh wait there we go if I had customized there it was what do I have to do to get it to stay there Add new toolbar. I'm not sure, but anyway, if you close the status bar at the bottom as I just did, you're going to lose that icon. So Firebug has put a tool up here on the normal dock or the normal toolbar. And of course, I'm sure if we customize that, we can drag that off if we wanted to. However, I'm going to leave that there. So just beware, because in previous versions of Firefox, the um, there may have been an option to put the Firebug icon up here on the toolbar. I'm not sure, but it was not there by default. That's for sure. Now it's here by default, both up in the toolbar and on the status bar, if you have the status bar open. So that's how you can open up Firebug. Just click that little icon there, and it'll... You'll notice that if the icon is colored, that means Firefox is enabled but not showing, which is this button here is just minimized. However, if I press the X here, the color from the bug is gone, which means Firefox has been closed. And if Firefox has been closed, then you'll have to refresh the page to get the uh, um, to get the output down here in the console. Well, this is the end of Screencast One, in which we've discussed kind of the, what you need to know about getting started with JavaScript. I hope you're going to enjoy this Screencast series of getting good with JavaScript, and I will see you in Screencast Two, where we'll discuss the very, very, very basics of JavaScript. Thanks for watching.